Hi guys, welcome to this session in LibreOffice Calc. In this module, I want to talk about when you should lock cells and when you shouldn't lock cells. So on the screen, I've got a simple example where I'm going to do some totals and then show you when you should lock the cells. So let's do the sums first off. So if I highlight all of this data and do the key command Alt equals, that should drop it in for me. That's the same as clicking sum. Now, if I work the percentage out for these figures, so what is 319 as a percentage of the total? This is the formula equals B13 divided by N13. And then I'm going to tick that. And it comes up with 6.67% because these, this row is already formatted to percent, as you can see there. Now, the problem you get is if you go to pull that over, I'll just pull it two cells. I'm getting a div error message. If I click on the first one, look at the formula, C13, which is the total for February, so that's correct, divide by O13. O13 is a blank cell. It's the first orange cell there. And this one is looking at D13, which is correct, and P13, which is also not correct. That's the second orange cell. So what's happening is this is just maintaining the gap, the stagger, if you like. What I need to do is tell the computer not to move this cell across into these other orange ones to lock it. The technical term is to make it absolute. So going back onto the first one, what you need to use is dollar signs and I need to be up here. In this example, I actually only need to dollar sign the N, but if in doubt, I'm going to put them both on. So I'm pressing the F4 function key and that will put both a dollar sign in front of the N, which is what we need for this one, and the 13. If we were coming down, it doesn't matter in this example, that will work. If I tick that and pull that over, you'll see that dropping that in there. 100%. Now, if I do it again, coming down. So in this example, it would be the 13 that would need to be locked. But let's just type it out equals N5 divided by N13. Now, I need to lock that N13, and I just would need a dollar sign on the 13. But again, if in doubt, put them both on with the F4 key. Click the tick. Get the percentage there because it's already formatted. Pull it down. So that's an example of when you would use dollar signs. Next sheet along, if I go into the next sheet, what I've got here is some simple sums, some sales, and I want to do a 10% markup. There's a 10% markup. So this is a simple formula first off, equals the sales figure times the 10% markup. Now, I'm not going to do a dollar sign straight off, but watch this. If I tick that, I get the answer. That's 10% of that. When I pull this down, it's going to give me inaccurate information because I haven't locked that 10% cell. So this one is moving down to H2. There's nothing in H2, H3, H4, etc. blank cells. So what I need to do is go back up to the top one, make sure I lock that with the F4 key. I do need to lock it this time, the whole thing, and tick that. And then when I pull that down again, it will work. I could have double clicked that down. Now, this example, I don't need to use the dollar sign. This next example, I just want to add these two up. So I can use the sum function to do that. Just simply use the sum function. The key command for that is alt equals. It's just looking at those two cells. Tick that. No dollar sign needed. I get the little black cross and double click that down and it all works because it's just looking along the row for its cell references and it wants the row, each, each row as you're coming down. So that's no dollar signs back to using dollar signs again now i want to basically have a running total i want it to add up these two cells and then these three cells and then those four cells as we're going down so now i need to type this out i'm going to type this one equals sum open bracket so it's going to be e2 now e2 needs to be dollar signed i'm locking e2 with the f4 key and then I'll get myself up here so I don't delete that. Do a colon and then type E2 again and then close the brackets. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm locking part of this formula. If I tick that, it'll still work. It'll start it, still add it up. But if I pull that down a couple of cells, I'm getting a running total because what's happening is, if I just highlight these three cells, that says 73260. And down the bottom there, when you highlight cells, it'll tell you the sum, 73260. You can see that. So if I click on the second one, it's saying E2 because that's locked. That's the starting point up down to E3. So it's moving down. And the next one will say E4. And if I keep pulling it down, as I come down, that's going to go from E2 to E8. That's how it's working. I'll just double click the rest of it down, all the way down. I don't want that bottom bit though. So that's that one. So that's a dollar sign on and that dollar sign there was not needed. But this one is only one of them. Now, if I go on to the last sheet, this is an example of a mixed reference where you've got a dollar sign on a column and a dollar sign on the row. So if I just delete all of this data first off, get rid of this, it's like your times table. So one times one is one. Let's do that one. So equals that cell times that cell. One times one is one. Works. One times two is two that's okay one times three is three and it's saying six one times four is four and it's saying 24 obviously i'm going wrong here something's going wrong now what's happening is if i click on to that 24 it's looking at e2 which is three and f1 which is four so e2 sorry six times four e2 is six and F1 is 4, and that's, this one is looking at F2, 24, and G1, 5. And if I keep pulling it across, it's looking at the wrong cell references. So I need to use dollar signs to stop this happening. So let's get back down to the front. In there, it's going to be equals this cell, but I need to lock that cell. So I need to lock the B, so I need to get in front of the B, and press F4. Now that's locking the whole cell. I don't want that. So I'm pressing F4 again. That's locking the row 2. And F4 again is locking the B. So that's what I want. And then up there I'm going times C1. And then ticking that. So when I pull that across. That should work now. It should be exactly the same. 1 times 10 is 10. Great. But what happens if I pull this down? If I pull that down. So this is again has gone wrong, look. So what's do, what's happening there? That's looking at B6, 5, and C5. C5 is that cell above, 24. So this needs sorting out as well. So I'll just delete these off. What I have to do is lock row 2. So I've locked the column. Now I'm going to lock the row. So up on the top there, row 1 should I say, not row 2. In front of the 1... I'm going to press F4 until I just get a dollar sign in front of the 1. I'm pressing it again. Now I've got a dollar sign in front of the 1. So I'm locking row 1 and I'm locking column B. But the actual number for the column is not locked. And the actual letter for the row is not locked. So it's going to go D, E all the way across. And that's going to go 2, 3, 4. If I tick that, what I can now do is pull that down. So 1 times 10 is 10, and then I can also pull it across like that. So 10 times 10 is 100, so that's how it works. And that's an example of a mixed reference. And you've got the formulas that I've used there, and that's how it sits. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video, when you should use dollar signs and when you shouldn't use dollar signs and how you can achieve things like this because if you had to type this out manually this would take a long time but with the fixing of dollar signs one in front of the column one in front of the row that's quite quick so hopefully this little video is of use thank you for your time i'll catch you to the next one